Hello class. Uh, today's topic of discussion is disaster management. Uh, this is part of semester 2 environmental studies paper uh, meant for the students of University of Kerala. I am Naina Kaunich, Assistant Professor, Department of English, SN College, Workala. So, disaster. What is a disaster? Uh, what we call Durandam. It is an unexpected, namalu pradeshikya thoro accident aana, unexpected aatlo oru catastrophe aana, which in turn disrupts or impacts the functioning of a society. And as a result of this is disaster, uh, there will be human, material, economic as well as environmental losses to this particular community affected by a disaster. And you should know that uh, this disaster is normally sudden and there is a wide spreading out as a result of which the impact of disaster is called ripple effect as we all know there are two kinds of disasters we of course have the natural disasters and then there are the man-made disasters uh, some of the man-made man disasters include hazardous material spills like the you know release of chemical and radioactive materials then you have fires you have groundwater contamination through pesticides, fertilizers, industrial chemicals, uh, thereby contaminating or polluting the groundwater sources. You have transportation accidents. Uh, then you have the structure failures. Uh, one famous or rather notorious example of structure failure in India is the Kadalundi train disaster. Then you have the mining accidents. And if I'm right, there were around 377 uh, deaths in the past three years because of mining accidents and explosion and of course you have explosions because of terrorism and other uh, human criminal mines now coming to natural disaster natural disaster as you know is an act of nature and it has enough strength to create a large-scale catastrophe or changes in the lives of humans as well as other living things it obviously disrupts day-to-day -day patterns of the society and as a result of which we are completely and totally helpless and we have to suffer what we need is protection from unfavorable environmental factors as well as we need food clothing shelter medical nursing care and other necessities on a day-to-day -day basis uh, these are a uh, few of the natural disasters. Uh, it include floods, uh, then you have earthquakes, bhukampam, then heat waves, uh, which is you know prolonged period of abnormally hot weather, cold waves. There is climate change, and because of the human activities, we have ozone depletion, uh, landslides, mannerishal, volcanic eruptions which is you know hot materials from the earth's interior are thrown out of volcano we have avalanches a mass of snow ice or uh, rocks fall rapidly uh, down the mountainside you have tsunamis we have hurricanes wildfire droughts to name a few now uh, these are the nodal ministries that deal with the different kinds of disasters in India so the air accident you know by air accident you mean a simple example is plane crash the air accident is dealt by the ministry of civil aviation in india uh, biological disasters like materials i uh, mean uh, medical problems like dengue covid 19 are dealt by the ministry of health chemical disasters uh, for example, the Bhopal gas tragedy or the recent Vishagapatanam gas leak is dealt by the Ministry of Environment. Some of the other national disasters like cold waves, hailstorm, forest fire, heat waves, except for drought are dealt by the Ministry of Human Aff Home Affairs. And drought is dealt by the Ministry of Agriculture and the nuclear accidents we have rather two notorious nuclear accidents in India, Kalpagama and Tarapur, which is dealt by the Department of Atomic Energy. Now, disaster management at national, state and district level. Uh, 
uh, as we all know it is the ministry of home affairs that is the central ministry of the government of india which is meant for disaster management this home department collaborates with other departments mentioned earlier to coordinate disaster management now disaster management at the national level in the ministry of home affairs you have the central relief commissioner who functions as the nodal officer and he or she is responsible to coordinate all the relief operations regarding natural disasters and this relief commissioner gathers all her, all the information about weather and the possibilities of a storm or heavy rain from the inti meteorological department imd and the central commission cwc the commissioner in turn informs the cabinet ministry of the a uh, cabinet secretary of the ministry of home affairs and this cabinet secretary will inform national crisis management committee ncmc and the ncmc make sure that they access the extent of disaster on a daily basis and report to higher authorities then we have the emergency medical relief division emrd under the ministry of health and family affairs that coordinates state agencies to operate relief and medical camps the two agencies the emrd and the ncmc will be in constant communication and what they do is they collect all the data regarding the number of victims affected the health profile of the victims etc and again they give it to the higher authorities now disaster management at the state level obviously we know it is the state government that is responsible for coordinating immediate relief operations in the affected area uh, and it is the relief commissioner who is in charge of relief measures the state operates through the revenue department or also called the relief department uh, the state government forms a group or a committee called the state crisis management group scmg it functions under the leadership of the chief secretary of the state in some states uh, the relief commissioner also heads the scmg both are the same persons uh now uh which all department helps the scmg it includes the revenue department forest health civil supplies power irrigation water supply rural development agriculture forest public relations and finance they work accordingly under the instruction given by mha ministry of home affairs they are responsible for coordinating state as well as the district agencies uh, and what they do is in the event of a crisis this scmg the management group establishes an emergency operation center uh, what we laymen call the control room and they operate by providing updates about weather conditions and the possibilities of heavy rain or storm this control room functions as the contact point for coordinating disaster management efforts it connects all the agencies the ngos as well uh, and effects quick relief to areas where the calamity has occurred now disaster management at district level this district level committee is headed by the district collector who is also the district magistrate uh the action plan is charted out by him or her under the uh, scmg instruction scmg as you know is the state crisis management group uh, the district relief committee under the leadership of the district collector establishes a control room the eoc has mentioned earlier and coordinates medical care takes steps to prevent epidemics and interacts with media to give correct updates he or she coordinates uh, with various departments like the police the health uh, public relations fire forest public work etc to operate at disaster sites uh, the natural disaster that we are going to discuss in detail today is floods like the vellapokkam uh, floods occur or it can happen when a large volume of water is not able to drain off quickly apo how does this large volume of water happen uh, it could be because of a heavy rainfall 
it could be because you know there's an overflow of river or a dam has burst and water what happens is after this wall a uh, large volume of water accumulates uh, runoff water is not happening or ground absorption doesn't happen as a result of which flood occur uh, uh, for your understanding i have divided floods into three you have the precipitation floods non precipitation floods and the man made floods precipitation floods are formed due to condensation of atmospheric water vapor valare simple aayittu parayanengil mala peedana shesham allengil manju riyadana shesham undavuna flood ne aanu precipitation floods annu parayanadu flood falls into the ground in the form of drizzle chattal mala rain sleet snow or hail hali padamuri the examples of precipitation floods are heavy rainfall flood as well as the flash floods that happens in india and other places uh, now we have the non precipitation floods uh, this happens because of the uh, breaches in canal and river embankments overflowing of canal as well as rivers either dam bursting kondum undavam rand Uh, the examples include estuarine floods and tsunami floods tsunami earthquake and dive nation vella pogi varunathu adu example of non precipitation flood aanu adu koodaandu estuarine flood poli kaayilum kadalum theerna aa bhagathu cheerna floodum endana aa bhagathu undavuna floodum non precipitation flood aan and finally you have the man made flood uh, this happens obviously because of the poor planning of urbanization Uh, system in india and everywhere uh, floods in urban area due to lack of proper drainage system nammala simple aitla example nu orunjunya oru cheriya mala veeyumbol thanne trivandrum thambanur bhagathu mala pogunnathu proper aitta planning nadakka undavuna structuring the uh, flood in the example aanu it is caused by the lack of proper planning in constructing roads as well as buildings water accumulates in low areas and cause floods now uh, how is flood forecasted in india uh, as you all know floods cannot be prevented but it can be uh, you know reduced by adopting proper disaster management measures uh, for the loss of property and lives but uh, india lo Uh, three cost effective ways are adopted in other uh, those are forecasting monitoring and uh, forecasting means uh, weather forecasts enable people to understand the possibility of a flood aalkar nerthu arikkana weather forecasting way and give them time to move away avare avadnu maati maari thamasikkan avarku pattana and from the possible areas of flood carrying movable properties with them and this forecast is actually issued by the central water commission that we mentioned earlier cwc and how they do is river stages above when the river stages above warning level 1 meter below the danger level of forecasting site uh, simple words le parayanengile ipo periyar river le 10 meter aanu etra ennu parayunnathu danger level mark engil or 9 meters avumbulte avumbultekum authorities will uh, issue the warning sign that there is a chance of flood or overflow of river uh, and annually in india there are around 6000 warnings issued and it ends this warning ends with the withdrawing of the warning and we should know that the first flood forecast was done in india in the year 1958 and the first flood warning in india was issued in july 1959 about the delhi railway bridge on yamuna river uh, next the mitigation methods you know to deal with floods uh, there are various methods that can be adopted to deal with floods and to mitigate their you know adverse impact uh, there are structural as well as non structural measures uh, uh, structural method are highly expensive methods and in the long run they are the better option but then we are a third world nation uh, and it is extremely difficult for us to go with the structural method and in the structural method we need huge amount of investment we need lots of engineering skills intellectual skills are needed uh, 
uh, structural method can be done through the construction of storage reservoirs and constructing river embankments. As I said earlier, is a highly expensive method. Uh, and the CWC, the Central Water Commission, has uh, issued notice to India that we need to follow the non-structural methods to cope with flood situation. And what are some of the non-structural methods? It includes uh, modifying the land to allow free flow of water. That is, the flow of water is often prevented by the unscientific leveling of land for construction purposes. construction sites break either so that there will be free flow of water. The free passage of water is also often prevented by the plastic waste dumped in heaps, which also should be removed. Uh, the next method is the uh, modification of the people uh, through floodplain zoning. The CWC again has guidelines stressed on floodplain zoning. Uh, that is, the land areas that are prone to floods should be marked. Anganitha accident prone, flood prone itola areas alla mark either. People should be prevented from settling in such areas. And if they have settled down already, such lands need to be purchased by the government and these people should be reallocated to a safer places. Now, uh, the next step, the next mitigation method is preventing steps and warning well. That is, avare munkuti arekya, so that there will be less loss of livestock, farm goods, domestic utensils, etc. Thus, we understand that the systematic way in which disaster management cell operates in India, it is headed by the Ministry of Home Affairs at the center, then uh, the operations link to the state through the state crisis management group SCMG and then it trickles down to the district through the district relief committee. Uh, the poem The Truth About the Floods by Nessa Mizikil, which I have dealt in another session, you know graphically pens the impact of the flood on the lives of ordinary people. Thank you.